Today, we're going to talk about downsizing and decluttering. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Bob Bush, and I am a volunteer community educator. Today, I'm from AARP. Some days, I'm from Alzheimer's Association, but today, I'm from AARP. And thank you, Susan, for inviting me. I've been coming here for four-ish years, maybe, something like that. So it's a pleasure to come down and talk to you folks. I live just in up in north part of Manatee County, and up on the other side of the river up there in Parish, if you know where that is. Yeah, that's where my wife's Sharon back there. We are uh, both AARP volunteers and Alzheimer's volunteers. My wife has two support groups, caregiver support groups that she manages, and we're involved in that too. But anyway, today we're from AARP. And Susan told me that there is something coming up on the calendar. Tell us what it is again, Susan. I'll repeat it. October 5th, trinkets and treasures. Okay, so it's a sale of things you donate. The sale of things you donate. Today, we're going to talk about getting some things that you want to donate to the, to the sale for Susan for a good cause here at, all, at the Parkinson's, rather. So it's a, it's a great cause. But that's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, if you got a question, you can go ahead and in interrupt me. It doesn't bother me a bit. And we'll get started here. This is a special presentation just for you guys down here at Parkinson's. And I put you a little picture of your room here on my slide. And happy to be here. Let's get the slide to change. Stress. Are you stressed out about your stuff around your house? Raise your hand if you got too much stuff in your house and you feel like you got to get rid of some of it. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you were you were slow to put your hand up. <laughs> Raise your hand. Okay. Most everybody, I give this presentation a lot. This is one of the more popular presentations from AARP. In the last, I, I'm a national presenter too for that. And one of the last times I gave this one, we had 650 people from all around the country that signed on to our Zoom meeting. It's a popular one because everybody has got some junk in their house that they want to get rid of, right? I think it's just about everybody, but I, you know, most people I know do. Anyway, does your house look like that? <laughs> or your office look like that? That, okay, maybe, maybe. Does your, okay, it's not moving again, Dusty. Something's gone wrong. Not working again. There it goes. It just, uh, okay. How about garage? Yeah. You know, how many of you moved down from up north? Raise your hand. Up north, you might have had a basement, right? Where's your basement now? <laughs> In your garage. Now, I have to say that uh, I have two cars in my garage. I, my garage is, it's kind of messy on the sides, but the cars go in the garage. That's my thinking. So my garage does not look like that. Most of my neighbors do have their garages look like that. But anyway, now, if who's this guy right here? King Tut. If you're King Tut, your junk, your stuff is worth something, isn't it? So we want King Tut stuff. I don't, you know, most, nobody wants my stuff. My kids don't want my stuff. Nobody wants it. But if you're King Tut, you got some valuable stuff you were buried with, huh? All right. We're going to talk about why stuff is important to our age group. You here, us. I'm in your age group, I think. Most everybody looks like, yeah. Not to, there's a young man over here. I'm not in your age group. Okay. Anyway, uh, our stuff is important to us. I'm going to talk about why. And we're going to talk about some steps that you can take to get rid of some of your stuff that's junk that nobody wants. Older Americans, the fastest growing group in the country. 10,000, one with five zeros, people turn 65 every day. Right? You can see by these are millions of people. We are about right in here, huh? Look between the next 40 years, we're going to kind of almost double. There's going to be a lot of seniors around, right? And more and more people got stuff. 15% of 
of America today is uh, 65, right? In 45 years, a third of America will be over 65. Sharon and I went to Washington, D.C. for an AARP thing the other day, a few, a couple, few weeks back. They sent us up there for a big conference. And you go to a place like that, and you look around, and you, you start to realize, and you say, there aren't any old people around here. <laughs> Everybody looks young. And you come back to Florida, and you go, okay, I'm back with my crowd. <laughs> this is my, these are my people, because everybody looks kind of like me, you know. They're, it, and I'm joking, but when you go to someplace else that, that is not rich, so rich as Florida is with seniors, and there's a lot of positives about seniors, that we're not so rich with seniors, it looks different. It's a different feel when you go out in public. Some of the generations. Yeah, let's see. Not, probably not a whole lot of silent generations here. That's my dad. Here's me. I'm born in, right in here. Okay, baby boomer. And then they got X and they got millennials and we got some Z's and other things. And they got all kinds of symbols. The slide doesn't have the rest of them on there. But there's all kinds of different generations of, of people. But we're the, uh, we're the seniors. And we kind of have most of the money, I think, <laughs> compared to some of the young people that are str struggling today. Uh, you know, we have stuff. We're going to talk about why our stuff is important. First two generations, that's the, the, uh, the wartime generation, the, the, the depression generation, and the baby boomers. We like our things because we worked to get them, didn't we? We worked all those years to accumulate all of that stuff, and we like it because it means something to us. Or I have something that my mother had, or I have a picture of my dad, or I have something else. It means something to us, right? We are the largest number of people ever requiring health care. We're a big group, baby boomers, big, big group. We require Healthcare. We are a big, large population that's moving through the health care system. Right? I have a doctor for every part of my body. <laughs> you probably do too. There are some weeks that you probably, the, the, the highlight of your whole week is going to the doctor two or three times, right? Okay, I try to schedule all my, my, annual checkups and stuff in July, because it's too hot to do anything anyway. But it seems like in July, some weeks I go to two or three different doctors, and they're all important. They're all important. So anyway, uh, health care, you know it's becoming more and more expensive. And we are trying to figure out as a nation what we're going to do with all the people. Do we want universal health care? Do we want to keep the same system? I don't know, I'm not talking politics, this is not a political uh, presentation. All those are hard questions to answer, aren't they? What are we going to do with the healthcare system in, Amer in America? I don't know. I don't know, I'm not too sure. Little quick story, I used to live in Berlin, Germany, I was in the military. Lived in Berlin, Germany, and they couldn't deal with, with a, I had a growth on my nose, they thought it might be cancer. So they said, we can't deal with it, we're going to send you to the German economy to get checked up. And the Germans have universal health care. So they said, OK, go to this. My German wasn't real great. Uh, I was a Russian linguist, but I, I was dorked with Russians, but I was, went to the German health care system. And they said, go in at 8 o'clock, check in here. I walk in there, they have alphabetical thing. I'm a B, Bush. I go to the B row. They said, go up to fifth floor. I went up to fifth floor, and all these people are sitting around there. They have pillows. They have lunch baskets. I said, hmm, there is no appointments. You walk in and you sit down and you stay there all day long until the doctor sees you. And heaven be a problem to you if you have to go to the restroom because you step out and the nurse calls your name and too bad, you've missed it. 
That was the healthcare system. That was my introduction to universal healthcare. It, it was uh, something different, something different anyway. Um, we have a shortage of housing in America. You probably all know that, right? We have housing. What do you hear in the news a lot when you hit, listen to politics and things? All these political people that are running for office, they all use a couple of words. Affordable housing. How many times you heard that, right? We need more affordable housing. Need more affordable housing. Need to build more affordable housing. So there are people that are moving here have some place to live. And I'm thinking, maybe they ought not move here. We have enough, we have enough people as it is, but I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, affordable housing. Housing for people is going to be a bigger problem as we move into the future years, and it's got to be dealt with. If you look around the county, Manatee, Sarasota, they're building a lot of apartments, aren't they? You see them going up all over the place. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Okay, if your place looks like you have this, now this looks pretty tasteful, doesn't it? And over here, not so good. So we're going to talk about some ways to get rid of that stuff, if that's what you have. If not, okay, too much stuff. Kind of looks like too much stuff for me. That's my perspective of this picture. Now, maybe this, everything like this little house here means something to that person. I don't know, but it looks like too much stuff to me. My house doesn't look quite like that, but all right, National Care Survey. This is a survey across the nation. Most caregivers said handling the stuff, stuff being as something that you have, right? Handling the stuff, handling the stuff was the most stressful part of settling the estate. My mother was a depression age lovely lady, depression age lady. She lives in the country on a farm. Until she went to high school, she had no electricity. She grew up doing depression. She saved pieces of string rubber bands. She saved everything. I'd come home. I was in the military station all around the world. I'd come home and go in the wintertime, come into the house. They had a big closet there to hang your coats in, open it, and it was full of coats. And I look in there and I go, that's my high school coat. I'd say, mother, I, I, I'm probably 35 this time. Mother, you've still got my high school coat. You, there's nowhere to hang up a coat in your coat closet because you got so much stuff. And she said, well, somebody might want to wear that sometime in the future. And I'd say, yes, mother, that's just great. And leave it at that because you did not want to cross my mother and upset her about the coats in the closet. When she had to move into a, a, a home, we had to get rid of her stuff. Oh, boy, it was tough. Finally, we just started getting dumpsters and throwing it in there because there's no way we could sort it out. She had too much stuff. Thousands of little the things, that come, margarine comes in the little tubs, literally thousands of them seem like. String, balls of string, things of rubber bands, tinfoil, she saved tinfoil. That was my mother, bless her heart. So that's my kind of reaction is to step back and go, I don't really want to live like that. So there's, there's me. Here's an important thing. Nobody wants your stuff. You think it's valuable, <laughs> nobody wants it. What's your name? Rana. Rana. Nobody wants your stuff, Rana. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> nobody wants your stuff. I had, my son lives in Texas, San Antonio, and, and Sharon and I, uh, some months back, I wanted to, there were some things I, I wanted to give my grandsons. There are some things I wanted my kids to have, some military memorabilia and stuff. So I said, if I wait, it's going to get thrown out because no one's going to deal with it. I'm going to get in work. Sharon and I are going to get it in my pickup truck, load the thing up, drive to Texas and give it to them. We came and delivered all that stuff. And my son got me aside later and he said, Dad, don't ever bring your stuff to my house again. I said, yes, son, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I wanted to give you some. I wanted my grandboys to have some of my stuff so they can either keep it or throw it away. Like my leather bomber flying jackets had two of them with insignias and stuff on them. Things like that that meant something to me. Now, maybe it may mean nothing to those boys, but at least they, they could have all my dad's stuff from me. He was a military guy too. All of his stuff, World War II bomber jackets. He was a bomber pilot in World War II. 
all the stuff got lost. I would love to have it, but I don't have it anymore. Okay, so no one wants your stuff. It's not going to be worth much. We're going to talk about 10 tips to downsizing and decluttering, kind of either word mixes up. Declutter, downsize, whatever word you want to use. So we're going to talk about it. Tip number one, when you start downsizing, decluttering, include everybody in your household. Are you two together? Yes. You got to include him if you want to get rid of stuff. Most you... of it's his. <laughs> Most of it's his stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she better not throw anything in one. I know. Go out there and deal with it. I know that I never throw anything away in my house because Sharon will get me. I ask her, Sharon, dear, can I get rid of this? I was cleaning off the back porch today. There was a little water can. I said, I want to put that in the trash. She goes, no, no, no. That's my water can. You can't get rid of that. So it's got to be, a, I'm joking, but it has to be a group effort. You can't just one person can't do it. It's not going to work. You have to involve everybody in your group to admit that you want to get rid of that stuff. So, okay. 10 minute sweep. Anybody know what that means? Anybody guess? Yes, ma'am. What do you think? Spend 10 minutes in one place. Yeah. Spend 10 minutes. You don't, you don't overwhelm yourself and spend a half a day or something. You say, okay, I'm going to go clean out that little corner right there. I practice this once in a while. I, I said, I had the bottom drawer of my dresser full of shorts. I had more pairs of shorts than I would do with. I, so I pulled them all out in the bed and I stuck, stacked them up and I said, can't wear that one. Nope, too fat for that one. <laughs> you know, those are old, can't wear that one. Sharon says, get rid of those. You know, you don't want those. Those are bad looking. So that felt good, but it only took me 10, 15 minutes. The whole idea is you nibble off a little bit. There's two kinds of approaches to decluttering. One of them being the snowflake or the snowball. You got any, anybody want to guess what snowflake versus snowball is? Anybody? Guess? You want to make a guess? No? Snowflake versus snowball? The snowflake comes fluttering down one at a time. Beautiful, right? So you, little, you nibble it a little at a time. The snowball says, I am going to do that today and I'm not going to quit until it's done. Whichever kind of a person you are, use that approach. If you're like the bull and you're going to tear in there and take, take care of it, do it that way. If you want to do the 10 minute thing, do it that way. It's up to you. There is no fast, hard rule. But the, the, the point of this whole thing is usually for most people, take little chunks, take little chunks off and it's going to be easier and more palatable for you. Okay. <laughs> Unpack your bags when you come home for a trip. Anybody want to raise their hand if you don't unpack your bags? Anybody not unpack their bags? Or you don't have to, anybody brave enough to say they don't? Usually I get somebody that says, I don't do it, I just put them in the closet. <laughs> no, I, okay, nobody's going to bite on that one. Unpack your bags, put your stuff away. Sharon and I have a travel trailer, we travel around a lot. We come home, we unpack everything, put it away. Put it back where it belongs. So unpack your bags, don't leave them ready to go. Some, some people the, I've talked to say, if you don't unpack them, they're all ready to go on the next trip. So I've saved myself some trouble. <laughs> then the next question is, do you wear dirty clothes? <laughs> Are your clothes clean? Do you have clean undies? You know, I don't know. Okay, step, every item has a place in your house or get rid of it. If you can't, this, I like this one. If you can't identify a place that that belongs right there because you want it there because you're going to use it that goes to the top of the list to get rid of if you don't have a place that that's where it's going to stay and you keep it there because you use it get rid of it you can see you know the shoes here and so forth things <clears throat> that's a real good one though that's a good one okay we're on number five sort your stuff into piles keep sell donate trash Keep, sell, donate, trash. Things you want to keep. Things you want to sell. Now, as Susan said, they're having a sale here. Bring your stuff down here, donate it. It'll go to a good cause and, uh, you know, make some money for support your, your cause here. Wonderful cause. 
that's selling. Donate. It's always nice to donate. If you feel that it's something is worthwhile, donate it. Now, Sharon, my wife, works at the church uh, thrift shop. And sometimes people, they don't turn people away. You can watch, I've worked there once. I don't, I don't work there much. But anyway, somebody drives up and they put something out there and the person unloading it kind of looks at it like, they don't say anything, just thank you. Person drives off, they take it, put it in the dumpster because it's not worth anything. Yeah, so, but try to donate it. If it could be used and recycled, reused, that's a positive thing, if it's possible, if it's possible. And the last one, put it in the trash. Now, when you decide, decide that you're going to donate or sell it, move it immediately. What does that mean? Put it out of the way. When we decide we're going to donate something, I usually take it out immediately and put it in the, in the garage in the back of my pickup truck because we'll drive by the thrift shop drop off place, you know, and drop it off. If you let it set there, what are you going to do with it? You're going to look and you're going to say, hmm, I think I'll keep that one. <laughs> oh, I like that shirt. <laughs> oh, that's a great thing. I saw Sharon take something out of the, uh, <laughs> she's going to give me the eagle eye. I saw her take something out of the donate pile the other day, and I said, aha. <laughs> I saw that. She took something out of the donut, donate pile, but I didn't say anything. I just kept my mouth shut because I'm smart and, and know better, right? My point is, once you decide it's going, get rid of it. Get it out the door, and you won't look at it again, you won't say, I think I'll take that one out and put it back in my drawer again. Once you make that decision, don't go back. Next one. Distribute legacy items. Anybody want to guess what a legacy item is? What is the picture? Silverware, China, fact, you would call it heirlooms maybe, I don't know. Sharon works at the thrift shop that people bring sets of China. You cannot give them to people anymore. No one wants to set, right, dear? No one wants to set a china. It's not popular anymore. People just don't want it. Okay? One of the things I took to my son was my mother's silverware. I wanted my granddaughter to have it. If she wants it, you know, we didn't take the china because she probably didn't want that. But the silverware, they, they can all sell it for scrap and make money out because that's something you can keep. So, Distribute your legacy items, not when after you're gone. After you're gone, there's probably a big push to deal with your things, and it will go who knows where. It'll be tossed out. That way, you can say to a loved one, would you like Aunt Betty's silver? Or would you like Grandma's china? And if they say no, Accept that. Don't keep making them feel guilty, right? I think the next one's about punting. No, avoid punting. Yeah, it was. Punting. Punting is when you take something that you like and you try to inflict punishment on somebody you know and make them take it whether they want or not. Oh, you sure you don't want this little statue that Aunt Betty had, right? Are you sure you don't want it? Are you sure you don't want it? After dinner, would you like this little statue? No, no. I, talk, I did this presentation, and I, we're talking about punting, and the, I, I said, anybody do punting? And the little lady raised her hand. She said, here's what I do. She had a big family, apparently, and she would be invited over for various functions and so forth. She would take something, put it in her purse or bag, and walk in the house, not say anything, and put it on someone's shelf. <laughs> Just leave it. Don't say anything. Just leave it. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> just, just leave it. Is, is that a good way of doing it? I, I don't think so, because the other person may not want it, right? So that's called punting. I, I don't know. I mean, that's, to me, that's not really fair. You should ask the person. The whole idea here is to ask somebody, would you like to have this? 
And if they say no, then donate it to Goodwill or somebody else, to your church or whatever you do with this stuff, or bring it over here to, to Susan to sell. Don't make someone feel guilty and say, okay, I'll take that. We had this thing in our house for a long time. Sharon's mother had it, dad had it, grandma. It's a cow and the a milkmaid, I guess you'd say, statue. And finally, we decided to get rid of it. And I said, let's take, her brother lives in town, let's take it over to Kevin's house. <laughs> I punted. We just walked in the house and put it down. <laughs> and it's, I, I, we were over there swimming on Sunday, and I said, on the way back, I said, did you see the cow and the, and the milkmaid? He said, no, but it's probably somewhere around the house. It's punting. You know, don't do that. If they don't want it, give it to Goodwill or something. Don't make, don't force it on them because then it becomes, your junk becomes their junk. And they got to get rid of it now. They probably got enough of their own stuff. Donate, donate, or recycle. A donation is a recycle, isn't it? It's, it's offering it to someone else that may want to use that. A great way, give it to Goodwill, give it to your church, give it to the Salvation Army. There's a whole bunch of them around here. You can give away your car, you can give away just about anything, right? Boats, all sorts of stuff. Donate, have it recycled. So try to donate it, get it out of your sight. Tip nine, be realistic. Will you ever use that again? Do you have a one end of your closet that's the fat end? <laughs> or the skinny end, as the case may be, right? And you go, hmm. A while back, I went through my closet and said, hmm, can't wear those pants, get rid of those, can't wear those pants, got rid of that. Critically ask yourself, am I going to use that again? There's several ways to do this. And one of the ways is to push everything down to one end and put a little ribbon or something or a piece of tape on the bar and start using your clothes. At the end of the month, and I'm sorry, you take your clothes you use and you move it to the other side of the bar. Okay, at the end of the month, anything that didn't make it to the other side of the bar, you say, I don't need that, and do it that way. There's another one, you turn the hangers around backwards and then turn them frontwards. So anything that's facing the other way, you didn't use it, you don't need it. Lots of different tips and techniques to get rid of stuff, but it all comes down to sort through your things. Most of us have something in our closet that we probably don't need anymore. Tip 10, pare down papers, photos, mail, shred old documents and bills and photos. What I did some point in time back, I took any loose pictures I had and I scanned them in my computer and saved them to myself on my computer to the cloud. And I took those pictures and I put them on the table and I started dividing them up. If a kid was in the picture, mailed the packages to the kid. You know, some of them were, there were more than one in, one in the picture, so he gave it to either one or the other. Bagged them up, sent them to the kids. Now they could throw them away, do whatever they wanted to, but they weren't in my house anymore. You know, maybe they wanted to show them to their children. If they didn't want them, throw them away. I still have them electronically. They're on my cloud. I just pull them out and look, look at them if I want to. But they're on their way out the door. Shredding. Shred. There is so much fraud and crime in our world today. You want to shred anything that's got your literally your name or any information on about you. Shred it. You can either go to one of the big box stores and buy a little shredder for $35, or you can watch the news, and a lot of places like a bank or credit union have a shred day. You take it, they have a big truck, you take everything down there, and they put it in the truck and shred it, get it out. If nothing else, do not put it in your trash, spend a couple of minutes and rip it into tiny little pieces. Put it in your trash with gooey stuff that nobody wants to dig in, and that'll stop them from digging and getting your information. Do not leave things with your name on it. For instance, advertisements to give you a new credit card. Got your name and stuff on it. Somebody can take that, send it in, cross off the address, get a credit card in your name, 
sent to their place. So tear that up, shred it, get rid of it. Don't have it around. Okay, no survey today. Conclusion, you cannot take it with you. Find some way to get rid of it. Your stuff is probably not important to anybody other than you. Children, anything else. It's like my son telling me, Dad, never bring anything from your house to my house again. He was, he was nice about it, but that was the essence. He said, I don't want any more of your stuff. We have enough stuff in our house. I don't want any more. So I said, okay, nothing I will ever take. But, you know, I look at our stuff and I say, let's get rid of some of those things because if we have something and somebody has to deal with our things, you want those kind of trashy stuff to be gone already. I have a little barn out in the back of the house. I mean, I need to go out there again. I did a, a few, well, probably a year back, I did a purge out there and got rid of a lot of stuff, but I still have a lot of stuff out there, old tools. I don't, you know, I'm older. I don't do those things I used to do anymore. So sometimes I look at that and I say, I think I'll keep my saw a little while longer. I might want to saw some up. I haven't sawed anything up in a year or two. So, you know, you can't take it with you. Decide you're going to get rid of it. Make a decision. Donate. Get everybody involved. Once you decide to get rid of it, get it out of the house so you can't go diving in the bags anymore. Get rid of it, and you'll be happier. So there you are. Anybody have a question or comment? <laughs> I hope you had a little fun thinking about it, right? <laughs>